H&M is the official partner for season two of the Fashion and Color podcast, partnering with Harlem's Fashion Row for two years in a row for our Sustainability Summit. H&M is revolutionizing fashion by turning recycled materials into breathtaking, eco-conscious collections, such as Heron Preston, to reshape the fashion landscape through collaborative efforts like the H2 Collection. They are not just crafting clothes, they are crafting the future of fashion. So you guys know that I am always saying I'm with one of the most exciting guests and today is absolutely no different. I am so excited to be here with Ty Hunter, author, stylist, creative director, and entrepreneur. Welcome, Ty. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. You know I love you. I'm so excited too. Like, first, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm good. I, I'm a little tired, but I just got back from uh, D.C. I had to dress Billy Porter for this. Uh, oh. He did the Elton John tribute. Okay. So he was the host and the performing, and, and so we, me and my uh, manager, we just drove back uh, late last night. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. No, of course. I'm happy thank to be you, thank here. You. you know I love you. Ty and I love you. I'm going to keep saying that. <laughs> so let's start. Okay, okay. so I want to start because we had such a good talk, right, mm -hmm. um, about just your journey. Like, how did you get into fashion? Well, I always loved fashion. Growing up, my mom was a single parent, and um, she would, you know, give me that one pair. Of, this shows my age. I'm 51, so when I say these brands that you do not understand, <laughs> just work with me. Bear with me. But Calvin Klein. You don't look nobody's 51, by the way. You, thank you. But the Calvin Klein, the Jordache jeans, the Jabot, like, she'll give me, like, two or three of those. And I would have to trick them out. And growing mm -hmm. up, when I was growing up, when you wore like Salvation Army or Goodwill, you'll get talked about. Mm -hmm. But I would go to the, to the I loved hold, hanging out with older people. So my grandmother and my great grandmother were like my dogs. Mm -hmm. Like I, That was my safety. I didn't really like hanging with kids as much mm -hmm. my age when I was calling them kids. Right. Uh, <laughs> we would go <laughs> like, like look kids these over children, there. Oh. irritating kids. But uh, we would go like to, you know, vintage stores mm -hmm. and, you know, Goodwills and and all of that stuff and I would buy you know find stuff and just kind of like trick it out mm -hmm. so growing up I just love vintage I prefer vintage I didn't mm -hmm. want to wear trendy stuff that people had on I didn't want to go to school and somebody have on what I had on mm -hmm. so I would go to the thrift stores and shop and I was best dressed in mm -hmm. high school a lot I would be best dressed and you know I just loved fashion but mm -hmm. As I got older, I wanted to, like, after I left high school, I went to the Art Institute mm -hmm. uh, in Dallas for music video. Okay. And I wanted to go for fashion, but I didn't want to be called gay. I was mm -hmm. late. I'm gay, but I was late to the gay train. I didn't mm -hmm. come out until 22 years old. But I, I, I didn't want to be called gay, so I went to school for music video. Okay. I don't know why I thought I wanted to be Timberland or Pharrell or somebody. <laughs> Tell me to get on the mixing board. I won't know what to do. I really wasted my time and money, and I love getting dressed to go to school. And mm -hmm. I don't, I don't. Even, I just kind of left all of that out. Mm -hmm. um, but I left college and I moved back to Austin because mm -hmm. I was wait, I was like, I'm tired of wasting my parents' money. Mm -hmm. Let me get out of here. Go back home. Mm -hmm. I went back to Austin, Texas, and I started doing. I started working at an artificial heart valve company. Mm. And it was a good company. I, I made really good money, but I used to sit under a microscope and work on artificial heart valves. Mm. And everything was going well. Like I said, good money. I mm -hmm. loved my team. I, I loved it. But I found out one day a really good friend of mine had a heart valve. Oh, wow. We were getting dressed and he had a scar. And I was like, what happened to you, Tupac? You've been shot. And he was mm -hmm. like, I have a heart valve. And so even though I know I was making it for human consumption and right. for everybody. It went personal it at went the time. personal. Yeah. When it hit home, it hit home. Mm. And so this place became a place I dreaded. My numbers went down and I just got really depressed and sad. Mm. And so at the time, the president came out with a family leave uh, policy where mm -hmm. you could leave your job for three months. It wasn't guaranteed, but I was cool with my boss. And I was like, I made up a lie. I don't even know. I don't, I'm sorry, sir. I don't remember what I said, but it was a <laughs> lie. I told him some story and he was like, Ty, Tyrone, actually. Mm -hmm. My name is Tyrone. I dropped it because of Eric Badu. Uh, but he was like, Tyrone, you 
can leave. You know, your mm-hmm. job is here. Go take care of your family stuff. So mm-hmm. I packed my car up. I called my cousin who lived in Houston, Texas at the time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, can I come stay with you for a week or two? Mm-hmm. And he was like, yes. And by the time I got to Houston, Texas, I knew mm-hmm. that this is where I'm supposed to be. Because wow. Houston was just a melting pot of cultures. Yeah. Austin at the time was very white and black, no in between, mm-hmm. very just white, black, no gray. And I decided that I wanted to live in Houston. So my first job in Houston was TJ Maxx, and I worked at Office Max. And at the time, I'm a young parent. I, mm-hmm. My daughter was born, and so I have to make money. Um, and so I'm working at the two jobs, and then I started going to the Galleria Mall, mm-hmm. and I found a store in there called Buyaka. Mm-hmm. And Buyaka was like a store that played reggae all day. They had mm-hmm. waterfalls going through trees. And there I was like, I can do this. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I started working at Buyaka. And this is where my life changed. Miss Tina Knowles, the girls have No, No, No on the radio. And the wonderful Miss Tina Knowles came in. And, and we just connected, being yeah. that my mom was in Austin, Texas, four hours away. When yeah. you, If any of you ever met Miss Tina, you know when you meet her, you just get that motherly or aunt or family vibe from her and um, we just connected and uh, the rest is history as I grew like I worked at Buyaka then I transferred I got recruited at the guest store Mm -hmm. and so as I was growing they was growing and Mm. you know the songs and by the time Independent Women dropped I'm working at at, at BB and um, Miss Tina came in with the girls they were feminine a day in the life of Destiny's Child they were coming in and um, Miss Tina was like, I'm going to get you out of here one day. Wow. And she, I didn't believe her, but I had a day off like a week or two later. I called her and the, I was like, Miss Tina, I'm just saying if you need any help today, I'm off today. And she's like, yes, baby, meet me here. And I met her and my first job was the Survivor video and the Grammys. Wow. Yeah. And that was wow. the cliff notes of that long story. Wow. <laughs> wow. The fact that that was like your first yeah. Gig was the Grammys. Yeah. Huge, mm-hmm. huge. I remember you talked about the fact that she was testing you and you didn't know she was testing yeah, you. Yeah. We recently, a year ago, we did a show together and um, I didn't know there was a test. Like, uh-huh. I was working at, <laughs> at BB and she would call me and she was like, yeah, they lost the luggage for the dancers. I need 27 pieces to come overnight to to uh, Las Vegas for an Mm -hmm. awards show. It was like little tests like that, and I was making it happen, but Mm -hmm. I didn't know they were tests until we recently did uh, a show together. Wait a minute, until just recently? Yeah, when we did, me and Miss Tina, we did two two segments together, and she was like, those were tests. And I was like, oh, wow. And clearly you passed. (laughs) I passed, thank God. Clearly you passed. (laughs) Yeah. Um, We talked about kind of seasons, because how long did you style Beyonce? I started with Destiny's Child. I did Destiny's Child, Each Girl Solo Project, and Solange, all her stuff. And Beyonce solo project, Destiny's Child back together again. Then Each Girl Solo Project again. Uh, From 99 all the way uh, to 2015. Wow. And even when I left, um, you know, people thought I got fired and mm. stuff. So, but because I was promoting uh, a tech technology thing that mm-hmm. I was doing. And uh, I so never. So set the record straight I on this podcast. Fired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, the crazy thing is, it, it was a blessing that all of that happened because I it allowed me, even though I'm one of the nicest people on the planet Earth mm-hmm. and I'm very humble, loving, giving. You you learn who's there for you, mm. and you learn who's attached to you to because, because of, of who you, you attach to. Mm. And so during this process, a lot of designers, people that I thought were close to me, showroom people, friends, you know, people just started like falling off. Mm. And uh, you know, it was kind of sad, but at the same time, it was very refreshing because God was cleansing the palate for mm. greater things, and those people weren't allowed to go with me on my next, you know, phase of life and just right. you learn who was really truly your friend and who was really there for you. Right. And and it, I'm glad it happened cuz it really taught me, yeah. you know, who was really there for me. How how did it end? How did you decide I'm stepping away from style like for a while? Oh, uh, after On the Run 1 tour, I it was just other things. I never really had a long period of time off mm-hmm. and I was given 3 months off and in that process of 3 months off, I just started creating and doing other stuff and um when it was time for On the Run 2, I just knew that I couldn't, you know, mm. promote the things that I was working on and really go for it. And so the blessing in all of it is after I left, three months later, Beyonce asked me to dress her for the Met Gala. Mm. 
mm. in the latex. And so those people that was, you know, that fell off and thought, you know, I got fired, was treating me bad. They were like, oh, shit, he's still there. <laughs> What's going on? And I'm forever be here because that's my sister and that's my right. family. You know right. what I mean? So it's just... You know, God has a way of making things pan out through and you know, in the good as long as you're good to people. How does that how do you deal with that? How did you deal with that moment where, you know, you thought these people are here for me and then they have a perception of what's happened to you and then they all fall off? Yeah. You know, it like I said, it was it was already me leaving was a, a leap anyway, getting yeah. off payroll and just really taking that jump. It was like... That's I, a big jump. It's a huge That's jump. A big, okay, it's let's talk huge. about that cliff jump right Baby, quick. I was what did that feel like? I was falling for a year. What? <laughs> I was falling for a year. And, you know, B told me, like, if ever you want to, I'm going to support whatever you do. If you ever want to come back, I'm yeah. here. Like, so the door was open, and, and still to this day it's open, and she yeah. support everything that I do. I just really wanted to find out about myself. And yeah. I would, if I wouldn't have took that jump, I wouldn't know that I could. I was an author. I didn't know that I would create all these other things and, you know, design yeah. and all these things that I wanted to do. I just, I, you know, I'm very thankful for for the Knowles family uh, yeah. for just believing in me and allowing me to first come in and be a part of the family and, and, you know, find out about myself and me taking that jump and that time off, you know, just to let those creative juices flow. Because like I said, I, I had a moment of depression. It's mm -hmm. like you in that light and you're doing these things and then now you're home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and now the car service is not out there. You're going to have to take a, get your train or get in a taxi. You know what I mean? It was like uh, that kind yeah. of thing. But it, it allowed me to to also just put more into family yeah. and true friends yeah. and, and really learn more about myself yeah. and, and what, what I'm capable of doing and really put that time and investment into myself. It's amazing that when you take, I talk about taking cliff jumps all the time and taking risk mm -hmm. um, because I think you start to discover different parts of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think if you stay in a situation, you know, too long, I think about when I moved from Memphis to New York, you know, that was a big risk and I didn't really have any, a whole lot of sure things happening. Yeah. But that changed my life. It do. It, it's scary, but at the same time, you find yourself... I, we talked about this out there. I like you. I'm restless, and yeah. I, it's like, do I let this thing deteriorate me and eat me up, or yeah. do I take the the jump and the risk yeah. and see what could happen? Yeah. And the blessing in it all is that you know, I've learned that if I jump and it don't work, I have backbone. I could yeah. go home. You yes. know, going home back home does not a bad thing, people. If you yeah. if you gotta regroup and you have that mission of, you yeah. know, better. And I have loved ones that I could rely on. Some people yeah. don't have that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yep. so even me taking the jump from moving from Austin to Houston, I knew that if it didn't work, I could come back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yep. so I, I, I believe in taking risk as long as you have that backbone because a lot of people don't have that. Yeah. I feel like you're at this place right now, Ty. You are so zen. Yeah. Y'all have to, you gotta like, maybe you're feeling it right now through the podcast, <laughs> but like, you're so zen and mm -hmm. you're so sure. Yeah. What's gotten you there? You know, I've learned that I, I, I found my lane and I just stay in it. You know, even when it's good, bad, people like when you're good, when you're happy, mad, sad, depressed, you're still in this lane. But I've learned that, you know, if I go up there to the height of the feeling, mm -hmm. the fall is going to be great. Mm -hmm. And if I go too low, the climb up is going to be a battle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just rather stay here. It helps me to deal with everything. Mm -hmm. It helps me to really focus and really plan everything out because mm -hmm. nothing bad lasts forever. Nothing good lasts forever. Mm -hmm. So it's like in the, the bad times and the dark times, I've learned that I got to go through this. It's a learning experience. This Being on the earth is a learning experience for the next phase you know what mm -hmm. i mean I'm, I'm i'm trying to please the higher powers to go where i need to go right, to right, the great right, you know right, so right. i just learned to just stay leveled here because it works for me and it keeps my my peace of mind and it keep my mindset to deal with and tap all because the battles are coming daily yeah, like it's yeah. so much good going on right now but it's, uh, it's it's bad too it's like the scale is like this but at the same time you know i'm when i'm the bad i'm like what am i supposed to learn for this to level up to the next thing to mm -hmm. put more weight on the good mm. When you look out at the fashion landscape right now, what inspires you? 
What inspires me is I, I can say I am proud of men's fashion. Mm. You know, being that I came into the women's part of it all, you know, we would judge the next day who uh -huh. wore, you know, uh -huh. what did she, what was they thinking, <laughs> who wore it better, da 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 da. You know, and now it's like men are taking risk and, yeah. and like, you know, and, and straight men, I, I have to applaud you guys for just really <laughs> stepping up uh -huh. and just going there because it, the carpet used to just be about women and yeah. now it's about everybody. And, and I, um, also, the designers are taking risk and, and and making fashion not be too serious, and that's that inspires me. And even though I am a stylist, I prefer to let my clients be part of the transaction. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've never just dressed someone and say, "Okay, go. This is look number seven. Everybody's fighting for this mm -hmm. look. Go." Because it's about it's about um, you know confidence. You know, yeah. and it, you could tell when I look at the carpet, I'm not looking at what people are wearing. I'm looking about confidence. Like yeah. she felt good, and that's what shines through. It's not about the garments, it's about how, how the person feels internally. You talked about the fact that there are so many critiques. How did you deal with the critiques over the years? You know, I you said the girls ate you up sometimes. Yes, it. You know, you gotta. Long as you and the yeah. client are happy, That's and, and it. like it don't matter because yeah. you you're not gonna be able to please the world. Yeah. You know, it's like how do you feel when you look in the mirror? You good? I'm good. Let's We're go. Good. You know what We're, I mean? Yeah, because. Yeah. Everybody, these people are just, uh, I don't, you know, they have the right to their opinion at the same time, but how, and that's why I never did those shows about mm -hmm. judging people, you know, yep. like I always turn them down because I'm like, if you expect me to eat people up on the show about this woman who felt beautiful, she's getting this award, she done paid money for hair and makeup right, and a stylist, right, right. and for me to tear her up the next day is not happening, right, you know what right. I mean? Because she felt beautiful. Exactly. And so I, I, I never do those shows because I, you know, I just don't believe in that kind of thing. I love that. I love that. And people always got something to say. Always. <laughs> they always got always, something to say. Always. Always. So the key is don't scroll down. <laughs> don't just don't scroll down. Just <laughs> keep looking Stay and away feel from the good comments. about it. Yeah. I know that when you were younger, when you were living in Austin, there was an incident where that with a gun involved. Mm -hmm. And I remember you said that that night you felt like your life was going to end. Tell us about that situation, how that kind of impacts you even today. Um, I worked, like I said, the Heart Valve Company, and we had just leveled up and got this huge promotion to start, you know, doing great things. And so they had this company party, and then the company party was literally like a couple of days before my 21st birthday. And my favorite song at the time was Lenny Kravitz, It Ain't Over Till It's Over. So mm -hmm. we had the company party, but down the hill was the hood spot, the mm -hmm. the club. And uh, I was, so my, my one friend that worked with me, the only other black guy that pretty much worked with me, I was like, look, we're going to go to the company party. At a certain time, we're going to go down there and have a good time and then come back up. Uh -huh. And so this night they have bought me, my age comes in again, they bought me a Walkman. Uh -huh. And they brought me the cassette, Lenny Kravitz, it ain't over till it's oh. over. And um, so I go in the parking lot back in Austin, Texas, you didn't really have to go in the club because mm -hmm. the parking lot was the spot. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody had the, you know, the small trucks with the graffiti on the back mm -hmm. and the, the loud systems and the woofers and tweeters and all of that. And so we kind of just went down there, and I saw so many people I haven't seen in a long time, and I made up with people I wasn't really messing with. It was just a good energy. Mm -hmm. And I told, literally told him, I said, I'm, a, I'm like, I'm about to die tonight because I done saw people I haven't seen forever, and it was just a good night, like mm -hmm. a really good night. And finally I had to use the restroom. And so I was like, I'm going to go in the club and use the mm -hmm. restroom. So I went in the club and the line was too long. And that night, like, again, you know, my first gay experience was at 22. So mm -hmm. I'm still like, you know, mm -hmm. you know, straight. Mm -hmm. This girl comes, she's like really aggressive. She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. She's sexy, but she's so aggressive. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you doing what I'm supposed to be doing to you. Like, mm -hmm. it's nice. So mm -hmm. she was trying to get me to go to a hotel with her. So back then they would take the drug dealers to a hotel and then the guys would come in and rob you. Oh. I got shot for looking like somebody oh, else, wow. one of the drug dealers back in my hometown. Wow. And how I got shot, because I decided I'm not waiting in this line. I went to the, behind the building. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
I don't think I've used the restroom outside in a long time because of this. But it kind of, so as I zip up and get ready to go, these guys come with guns and uh, they're like, where is it? And all this kind of stuff. And like, and you know, like, what are y'all talking I don't know about? what they're talking about. But back then, you know, I wore a few gold, you know, it was mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Slick Rip the Ruler era, Big Daddy mm-hmm. Kane. So I had on Rayon and, you know, rocking the polka dots and like the chains and stuff. So I'm literally trying to give them my stuff. But I was back there with the trash and it was a long strip center. And I'm like... I already, I can't, uh, this certain peace came within me and I'm like, I'm going to die, but I don't want to die back here by the trash. Mm. I don't want my vessel to be found back here. Mm. And so I literally, when this guy came from the gun this way, I was just took off running and I did not run straight. I I, I talked about this the other day. I was like, I just want to, if there's any footage, I uh-huh. want to see out because I was doing all of this because I was like, they're going to shoot me in my back. So I heard pow, pow, pow. And I, I, you know, I'm running, and finally I look down. There's blood, like all, mm. all here. They had shot me at both of my legs, mm. and um, it, it's it's so crazy. And what I took from that is that, and I'm so glad it happened, and I'm so glad I'm here to tell the story, and I'm able to walk because they hollow point the bullet, mm. and the bullet, um, because they didn't do it right, it didn't explode in my leg. Wow. So one went through the leg, the other one went to my my sack. Mm. And the other one stayed in my leg. Mm. And um, I was told I can have kids. I have my mm. daughter. Wow. Two years later. Wow. Um, and it taught me that you could be a good... Bullets don't have no... <laughs> mm. You could be a good person. You could be the sweetest person. But if, when it's your time, it's your time. And it also taught me, why are you going to these places that are known for this? Mm. Like, the club, it was always a fight there. It was always something. But because Austin was so white and black... And no great. When I want to be with my people, I had this spot yeah, to go to, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, so yeah. that's just how it was back then. Wow. Yeah. Do you think about that? Like, is that something that it was very hard for me to talk about it for many, many years. And I had a, I had a phase where I couldn't be around my people. Mm. I talk about it in my book because the guys that shot me, all I just knew one was tall and, you know, a darker complexion, the shorter one was light complexion. Mm-hmm. So I would just freak out with like mm-hmm. when I was around my people. Mm-hmm. And so I had a phase where when I was, you know, just around the other races. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wake up. Like you you got you're black and right, you're, right, you you right. know, your your brother, your right, uncles right. or whatever. So I had to like get to a place of just you know, praying about it and getting over my fear of being around, yeah. you know, um, my people, like a huge, huge crowd of my people, because they never caught the people who shot me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I feel like when I talk to you, um, I don't know, there's a piece of you that's like, I have to live. Yeah. And I wondered if it came from, part of it may have come from that experience. It, uh, it does. And, and I, I knew that just surviving that and 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 the, the the fact that I was shot twice it didn't hit any bone and it didn't explode in my mm. leg and I was told I couldn't have kids there were times mm. when they was like we might have to amputate because they thought gang green gang green was mm. forming this like I have a purpose mm. and I, and and I can't let fear get in the way mm. you know what I mean so um yeah, it, it, I'm, I, like I said, it happened, and, and Lenny Kravitz, it ain't over till it's over, means so much to me because of mm, that. That's so beautiful. Now yeah. I have to go and listen to this. <laughs> um, thinking about taking risk, you just released something very, very special. Mm-hmm. And we did um, tie, we, Harlem's Fashion Row has a partnership with Naomi Campbell and, and Boss Collection. Yeah. And you were there, and after the event, you had on this bag around your neck. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at this bag, and I'm like, that is, I've never seen anything like this before in my Thank life. You. It's so dope. And then you gift me with this bag, uh-huh. and I'm freaking out. I have to show you guys the bag, because I Thank brought you. it. So you have to tell us about this partnership with iCloud and how it came about. Like My partner, um, Manuel Mendez, we created this in uh yeah, it's, it was a journey. It was like a four and a half year thing because, you know, we had to go back and forth and, you know, uh, sometimes they were closed because of holidays and, you know, everything was like a process and they'd send me the, you know, the leathers mm-hmm. and the, the meta- you know, the metals and it was like a long process, but we finally made it, thank God. Um, but yeah, I did the collaboration with A-Cloud 
and uh, it's a, I wanted to go. They, they're the name of the company that I did the collaboration with is A Cloud, and I wanted to go a little higher than the clouds. So I was like celestial, and I, I was everything on every, all the bags around. We did three different ones. That one is called the Black Hole, and I love it because it's just so different. And and, and, and the, it, you know, I wear mine around my neck like Flavor Flav clock, uh, as which you I can love. Start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's two. You have different chains. You have the shorter chain and the longer chain. Uh, and it's just a fashion piece, and it's I'm really, really excited. Um, I love it. Yeah, it's the Celestial Collection. So you've got this bag. Mm -hmm. You've got the book that you launched, Yeah. which tells your entire story. You launched yeah. it in 2022, was mm -hmm. it? 2022. Mm -hmm. um, how was it kind of going back and recounting your whole story? I wrote this book with the amazing Isla Mel doing, um, we literally started right before COVID First, and doing let's COVID. plug the book. Okay. The name of the book is? The name of the book is Makeover, Makeover from, from Within. Within. <laughs> Beyonce Knowles wrote the forward. Billy Porter wrote the afterward. And it really gets good on the back because these wonderful people gave me flowers. I just needed a sentence or two I from mean, everybody. And this is like, I had to break these down to like one sentence. They literally gave me paragraphs. And, and that alone meant so much to me. But Tina I mean, Knowles, Michelle Williams, Kelly Rowland, Rosario Dawson, Billy Porter, Jennifer Hudson, Tashina Arnold. Kelly Osborne and the wonderful Naomi Campbell, they all wrote beautiful Major. Uh, things on the Major. back. And um, it just, I don't know, I wanted, uh, I had a book deal, they wanted a fashion book. And, mm. and I, I just, I don't consider, even though I've done so much in fashion, that's just, uh, fashion. <laughs> <laughs> It's just not my DNA. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's so crazy because I feel like I, everybody I, we had on the show, especially stylists, would say the same thing. It's just not, I, I, you know, I dress people to make them feel good on the end. But my purpose is to make people feel good on the inside. Yeah. You know what I mean? And because this. Even, even looking I, at your Instagram, you I, can you see You wouldn't that. even know that yeah. I was in fashion because yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't, and I'm not a materialistic person. I yeah. love making people feel great, and I right. love making people feel right. good. But my whole purpose, and and you know, I want people to feel good internally. Yeah. Like even when I'm dressing people, I want the. I, I feel like it's a therapy thing, mm -hmm. a therapy session, a lot yep. of times because if you don't feel good on the inside, you're not gonna. It's, it's gonna seep out, you right, know, and right, you're not right. going to be able to sell that garment. So yeah. it really starts from within. Make over from within. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, so excited about the book. So excited about the collaboration. I know you've got something else coming up for, at the Apollo. Yeah, very I'm, I'm actually uh, on May 7th. I'm working on the wardrobe for this play, 50 Years in Hip Hop. Uh, it's called Sinking Ink. Okay. Uh, May seventh, it debuts. Uh, yeah, so it's my first time doing something like this, so I'm really excited. Also, um, I have a clothing line coming out at the end of the year. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about that? Made in Italy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I, I, I'm with this amazing team, and I'm, I'm really, really blessed and excited about that. Um, I'm executive. And you're in Italy a lot now. I'm right? in Italy a lot. Okay. Yeah, working okay. on that. Also, um, I I'm executive producing a show that'll be um, being shot in LA. Wow. And I think that's all I can tell you guys. Like, uh, there's a lot of great things happening. God is doing his thing. And, you know, I, I'm just happy. You know, everything moves at a slow pace. And, you know, somebody said this the other day. The turtle wins the race. Yeah. You know, as I, long as you're good to people, yeah. you put out good. I started this race. I talk about it. I had a van full of people. Now I've took out several seats and made a bed back there for myself. I might pick up somebody along the way, but when you get to the finish line, I didn't do anybody dirty. Yeah. I didn't step on any toes, and I put out good. I put out what I want to receive, and so, yeah, I, I just move in silence, and then just like, boom. <laughs> and amazing things are happening Thank for you. Thank you. Todd, thank you so much thank you. for being with us. <laughs> I've got a book for you. Uh, this I'm is excited. yours. Yay. I'm excited about this um, book. So, oh my gosh. Uh, your future is uh, beyond exciting. 
for me to Thank see. Thank you. And I'm so um, thrilled that you came onto the show. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And Thank I'm you. so proud of you. Thank you. I remember, you know, the first award you gave me, it was like a table of like, how many? it was like 12 of us. Yeah. And yeah. now look how big this is. And, and I always knew that. And you inspired me. Thank you so much, Ty. This is yours. Yeah. <laughs> it goes in here. And this is yours. Uh, hold on. I got a book, too. I got a book. We give her books, books. Yes, and I We're signed like it, too. And I said, keep shining. Brandis, keep shining. Love, Ty. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. Love this you. was amazing. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Fashion and Color Podcast. I want to thank our production partner, PVA Entertainment, the Harlem's Fashion Row team. Thank you so much for your support of Harlem's Fashion Row and for your support of Designers of Color. Please be sure to leave us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to share this with a friend. Welcome to the HFR movie.